friends and welcome to episode number 40 of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is the 28th of May 2016 and I'm actually recording on a Saturday which is very very unusual for me. But yeah, things are just kind of changing around at the moment which I'll get more into detail about later. So I'm recording today and I don't know when I'm going to record next sometime within the next week, but I'm not sure if it's going to be another Saturday or Sunday or whatever. Anyways, um, I'm so glad that you're joining me today. Um, if you're joining me for the first time, then I really hope you like it. And if you do like it, um, feel free to join us in the Ravelry group as well, which is the Happy Knitting Podcast group. And if you're coming back, um, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. So it's episode number 40, which seems a little bit crazy to me. Um, I've almost been podcasting for a year now. I think I started in June or July and I, I've been meaning to look that up for a long time, but I just never get around to it. Um, this week we also reached over 900 subscribers, which for me seems a little crazy. And Instagram is almost up to 1500 subscribers or followers or whatever as well. So these are sort of numbers that I can't really get into my brain right now because it just seems like a lot of people. So thank you to everyone who has subscribed and, I don't know, joined the Ravelry group as well. I really appreciate it. Um, so in the Ravelry group, that's where I post the show notes for every episode. And there's also a introduction thread and there's threads for shameless self-promotion, where if you want to be enabled by makers of bags and yarn and other good things, you should have a look. Um, and right now I'm actually hosting a giveaway. So I am planning to very soon release my second shawl pattern, which is the Squishalicious shawl. And I completely forgot to bring it over to show you because I do want to at some point show it to you again and give you more of an idea about yardage and yarns and all that. But anyways, I am planning to release that pretty soon. So I figured I'll open my thread and I'm giving away three copies. And after I release the pattern, we will have a knit along for that pattern, as well as my first shawl pattern, which is the Crazy Day Shawl. So, um, if you want to take part in that, or if you generally want to have the pattern in any ways, feel free to go into the Ravelry group and answer the prompt. And you can enter to win one of the three copies. I'm planning to release the pattern possibly even next week, even though I, don't just, I just don't want to make any promises because life is just super crazy at the moment. But yeah, I think it's very likely that the pattern is going to be released next week, around the beginning of June. And so the first recording after I release the pattern, I will draw the winners. So I don't know exactly how long the thread or the giveaway will be open. So if you're interested, I would suggest that you do enter pretty soon. Um, yeah, so that's it for housekeeping for now, I think. This is a knitting podcast and today I don't have any finished objects, but I have a hoe or a half object to show you. Some works in progress, some spinning. I want to talk about my sock knitting journey and then just life in general. So feel free to Stay as long as you want and if something doesn't interest you, I don't, um, I completely understand if you're not a spinner or if you're not interested in my personal life and things that are going on there, that's totally fine. And I'm out of focus. Yeah, that works. So I have a half finished object and it's living in my bag from Mina of Mina Makes and the Knitting Expat. And my hoe is, of course, a sock. So this is the first sock of my sock blank socks. Um, and the yarn is from Sarah's Texture Crafts. Um, it's her basic superwash merino and nylon sock base. And this was part of one of her color clubs, so it just has the colorway name color 9. And yeah, so I finished the first sock. I haven't blocked it yet. And um, you might know that yarn from a sock blank is always a little bit crinkly. So the fabric only really looks like normal sock fabric once you block it. But I haven't blocked it yet. So that's why it's a little bit funny. But yeah, I just knit a one by one twisted rib for 20 rows. I knit 91 rows of stockinette. So a very long leg for me. 
a fishnet's kiss heel, and a rounded toe. So last week I was already half finished with the foot, so I just finished that this week. And I have now started knitting on the second one. So if I take it out of its little needle cozy, you'll see that I'm close to finish edge of starting the heel on the second one. I have exactly 10 more rows to go because I just counted before podcasting because I was knitting on these. And then I'll hopefully turn the heel. I'm actually planning to turn the heel while this podcast is uploading. So yeah, I just really want to have these finished sometime soon. But I'm really, really enjoying knitting on them. And I, I feel like every week I'm just talking about Sarah and her store because I just love knitting with her yarn and spinning with her fiber and yeah really enjoying these oh yeah and I'm knitting these on 64 stitches and the needles that I'm using are 2.25 millimeter US size 1 higher higher sharp DPNs I think that's all you need to know about that so moving on to works in progress I have another sock of course on the go because I mentioned last week that I like to have one pair of socks for me and one pair of socks as a gift on the needles because there's quite a few pairs that I want to knit for certain people. So these socks are for my boyfriend. I think I'm not going to take it out of this needle cozy. But this is the sock. So this little pretty stitch marker which I love is where I was last week. So I knit the, uh, what's that called? the cuff and I put in a fish lips kiss heel, which is what I always do because I just love this heel so much. And I'm part way down the foot. So I'm knitting this on DPNs, 2.25 millimeters US 1. Um, and it's 68 stitches because these are for my boyfriend, as I said, and that seems to be the best stitch count for him. So the yarn I'm using is a German indie dyer who I'm using for the very first time called Wolkenschaft. And the colorway is Waltraut. And this is her classic sock yarn, so it's a basic 75-25 virgin wool and polyamide mix. And I really, really like the sock base. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I just really like how the stitches are looking. Like the sock yarn is relatively sturdy, but still really, really soft. So I think this must be one of my favorite sturdy sock bases. And she also has a softer sock base with Merino. But that seems so soft to me. I feel like I would wear through that really, really quickly. But I try. So yeah, socks for my boyfriend. They're going well. I feel like a couple of weeks ago, I was always knitting on pattern socks. Like simple pattern socks as the Hermione's Everyday socks or the Blueberry Buffle socks and the Pinstriped socks. And I was really, really craving vanilla. And right now I just really crave something that is not just stuck in it because all of my projects right now besides my blanket are just sort of stuck in it projects. So I might need to cast something more interesting on soon. And this is living in my bag from Connie of Chili Knits who sells yarn and also makes bags. And this is the perfect sock bag because it just fits one cake of yarn perfectly and I just kind of use it like a yarn bowl, like a pull from the center and it's just perfect. So that's that and I need a drink. So today I actually have a emergency snack as well. I have these fruit chucks from Australia because I used to um, live in Australia for quite a while when I was younger and came back a few times. And fruit chucks are these sort of chocolate balls with fruit, like typically apricot inside. And I think it's even typical only to South Australia. And so my friends came over and brought me some, which was really amazing. And I'm just drinking water because it's really hot. And somehow I'm not really into coffee as much as I used to be. I think it's because I stopped putting sugar in it and I'm trying to get used to it. And I still like it every now and then, but I've just lost that craving which is probably not a bad idea so um i'll show you my next work in progress which is my robin sweater and this is my lace white sweater that i'm knitting at the moment so this is the back 
and last week I was in the middle of that purple stripe and now I've started a second stripe so I've knit maybe about eight or so, eight centimeters or something like that which is quite a lot because there's a lot of stitches on here and the pattern is um, the Robin sweater by Jose Paquin which is P-A-Q-U-I-N and it's written for sport weight yarn and I just kind of um, turned it into a lace weight sweater and at first my gauge was fine but my row gauge was actually off which is why last week I already told you that I just kind of separated for the sleeves a lot earlier than I did and that I should have according to the pattern and now I'm just kind of doing my own thing and I'm just knitting straight down but yeah I used the instructions for the top bit so this is the front it has short rows so the front is a lot lower than the back which I really like so I'm not in a huge rush with this but I'm just knitting on it every now and then and the yarn I'm using is lace white yarn from BC BC Garn which is a Danish brand, Samila Extra Fino. It's 100% organic wool, it is not super wash. And yeah, I have um, 200 grams or 50 grams of each color, and I'm hoping that's gonna be enough to finish the sweater. But yeah, I have really no idea, so that'll, that's gonna be interesting. And that's living in my Diary of a Yarn Snob bag, which I also got as a giveaway prize. I think every single project bag that I own from other people, like the ones that I haven't sewn myself, are project bags that I won either as prizes or have been given as gifts. So yeah, I should say I'm knitting that sweater on 3.5 millimeter needles and I'm using my Adi Lace um, needles and as well as my Knit Pro Nova Interchangeable because um, I have the Knit Pro in, uh, Nova Interchangeable set. So depending what cable I need, I just switch the needles around a little bit, but both work just as well. So my last work in progress is of course my blanket. I only put in I think about six squares this week, but I'm actually really feel like putting in some more today. I think I only sat down and worked on it once this week. So last week I had just started this square, I believe, which is the Manus del Uruguay that I use for my socks. This pink one is one from France and that was a really, really nice 100% merino yarn, but unfortunately I can't remember the brand. This is one of the minis that I got from Valkyrie Fibers, which I showed last week. She has a brand new Etsy store called Valkyrie Fibers Tahoe, I believe, and I linked that in the show notes last week, so you can look that up. And this is a Sparkle Mini and I've really, really liked it. This is from All About Yarn, who is Jenny, and she has the All About Yarn Etsy store. This is Patterns Croy, which is the first time I'm using with it, and uh, knitting with it. And this one is the first time that I've ever knit with Hedgehog Fibers. Unfortunately, I don't remember the... Actually, I think it might be Villain, but I'm not quite sure. But I really like this colorway and like I said, I've never knit with any of the yarns and this is a sock base and I love it so much, seriously. I kind of felt like I just want a whole blanket of Hedgehog Fiber minis and I feel like I really should get some Hedgehog Fiber sock yarn at some point. So yeah, six squares done. Um, I'm using size zero needles, which are US size, uh, US size zero, which are two millimeters. And I'm doing 49 squares, uh, 49 stitches per square. And the other day I posted a really silly photo on Instagram because I was just playing with a blanket and I was wrapping it around me and I realized it's quite big and I just had some fun. So if you're interested in that, you might want to check out my Instagram because I felt really stupid, but it really cheered me up. So yeah, I love my little blanket and I feel like now it's actually, you know, starting to look like a blanket, which is good. So that's my works in progress. I feel like I sped through that, but honestly I haven't done that much progress. I don't have any new projects to show you, but so yeah, I guess that makes sense. So um, before I go into spinning, I wanted to talk about my sock knitting journey because Sarah of Naughty Gnome podcast did that last week and I thought that's actually quite interesting. So my sock knitting journey is essentially also my knitting journey because, um, well, I had, like most people, I guess, 
as a child learned how to knit because my grandma was always knitting and she was she's very good at knitting as well so as a child I learned you know how to knit and how to purl and you know I started the scarf that you never finish and that sort of thing but then I just never really knit again and then about three or four years ago I started crocheting because I wanted to crochet a hat so that's when it suddenly became really really popular to make your own hats and crochet so I did two or three hats and figured that out and then I just went to now I want to learn how to knit socks so I went to my grandma's and told her I you need to teach me how to knit socks and funnily enough she had this little swatch that I think she forced my sisters to knit on as well before doing anything complicated because at that, at that time they wanted to knit wrist warmers as well so I think my sisters had practiced practiced with that swatch already and she you know handed that to me and says just practice how to knit and purl so I did this sort of checkerboard um, pattern just to figure out the knitting and the purling and you know how to end a row and start a new row and all that and I was actually quite impatient because all I wanted to do is knit socks I don't even know why, but I just have this fascination and this idea that I want to knit socks and nothing else. So I would knit a little bit and I was like, Grandma, can I not, can I knit on my socks now? And she's like, oh, just maybe you should keep going a little bit. So she had some leftover sock yarn and she just grabbed some needles. And so we cast on my first sock. And the needles that I used are actually the ones that I still use for my Cozy Memories blanket. So they are these very bent um, 20 centimeter long um, sock needles, DPNs, and that's what I uh, learned to knit socks on. And the first pair of socks, my grandma didn't really know how many stitches to cast on because I think she hadn't knit socks in a quite a while. So she started the sock for me and she taught me the way that you have to knit the ribbing all the way to the heel just so they fit better. And I remember I was knitting so tightly and I had way too little stitches on the needle, which of course I didn't know at that point. And these needles are size zero, which I never realized. So um, my first socks, I I managed to do the heel. My grandma over the phone, you know, said, you know, heel flap, you just knit back and forth, and you do this and that and so on. And so I followed that with those instructions, and then I knit the foot. And then at some point, I decided, well, maybe now it should it should be time to knit. A toe. So I had no idea whatsoever and just kind of figured it out for myself. And I mean, I got two socks in the end, so I guess that wasn't a bad first try, but because I think I only had about 12 stitches per DPN, which was actually not even my fault because I didn't know and my grandma didn't know. And these socks were actually quite small, so I gave them to my sister, but I think diligently my sister actually wore them, or at least she pretended to like them, and that was quite nice. And from there on out, I just would always have a pair of socks on the needles and I figured out the amount of stitches I needed pretty quickly and started knitting my cuffs like I do today in stockinette. And I got a lot of, you know, just normal commercial dyed sock yarn and I would just always knit a pair of socks every now and then. So I wasn't a serious knitter, but yeah, just knitting stockinette socks was enough for me and it was something to have in my hands when I'm watching TV or coming home after a long day. And that's essentially how I knit socks and I knit about, I don't know, probably 20 or 30 pairs before I even was interested in knitting anything else. Like I was just super happy with my socks and I still feel like knitting socks teaches you a lot of things because you do the heel and the ribbing and the toe, so you learn a lot of techniques. So I never really had this ambition to knit anything else. I was quite happy. I was always bored knitting hats. I knit a couple of hats for friends who wanted hats. But yeah, until even, even now, hats are just not really my favorite thing to knit. And like I said, I had no idea really what I was doing, but it's working pretty well. And then at some day, someday I decided I need a second pair of needles. And I went to the sock, uh, to the yarn shop and I said, I need needles to knit socks. And they're like, well, what size do you want? And I was like, well, the ones to knit socks, because I just didn't even realize that there's, you know, differences. So they gave me three millimeter needles, which was very stupid. And I just 
learned the hard way that, you know, you have these things like gauge and stitch count and so on. But eventually I figured it out. And like I said, I think up until maybe 14 or 15 months ago, all I did was socks. Like when I met my boyfriend, I was like, you know what, I knit socks. And I just kind of, I did that and I didn't consider myself a knitter. But yeah, that's my sock knitting journey. And over the, over the years and over the time, of course, I perfected my socks and I realized that there's more than just stocking it and then you can change stitch counts and you can figure out which needles work for you and <clears throat> eventually I started um, also knitting in Magic Loop. In the beginning of the year I taught myself how to do two at a time and I've knit a lot of pairs in two, uh, two at a time as well but right now I'm back to my favorite method which is DPN sock knitting. So I don't know if that was interesting for you but that's my story of how I knit socks and yeah, for me, sock knitting was really just my entry into knitting, like everything else came a lot later and yeah, I would just always just knit socks and I just thought it was quite fun. And I still love knitting socks, like I think I took a break around this time last year because that's when I discovered Ravelry and podcasts and patterns and knit my first garments, so that's when I kind of didn't knit socks for a long time, but I, can't, I got back into it. And basically I've been knitting socks uh, as well as other pro projects ever since. So I think I'm actually, I, th I think I finished 15 pairs of socks in 2016 so far. I think I have pairs 16 and 17 on the needles, so I think I'm going good. And yeah, that's my sock knitting story or journey or whatever. Moving on to some spinning. Last week I was still working on some Rolex that I've made with my blending board. And I actually finished it, but my yarn is still a little bit wet because I'm always too lazy to actually wind it off my bobbins. So I did that just before. So these were um, Rolex of, um, that consisted of BFL and silk. So they were a woolen fiber prep. And I spun them into semi-woolen singles and then two plied them. So woolen yarn means that it's very airy and poofy and has a bit of a halo and I'm sure you can see it if I show you the yarn. So usually I tend to spin everything worsted. Worsted is my preferred method of spinning and that's what I'm, what I'm really good at I feel like. So this was a little bit out of my comfort zone. It's more, yeah it has more of a halo going on. It's a little different but I really quite like it. I feel like it's not showing up very well. It's actually a little bit brighter. It's like these sort of seafoam green colors. But there you can see it. So I think this is about 90 grams of yarn. It's, um, it's 270 meters I measured after washing. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. It's um, my second set of Rolex that I ever made. So I feel like I'm not that great at making Rolex and I'm also not that great at spinning from Rolex. So I feel like I really want, that's something I want to improve. I think I can make Rolex that are easier to spin and probably just have to get used to spinning from them as well. And if you don't know, Rolex are these sort of tubes of fiber that you can roll up into, you usually see them rolled up into these sort of snake or um, shell sort of shapes. So yeah, this is my BFL and silk. Before I turned this fiber into a Rolex, I also tried, I spun a little bit, a little mini of it from the braid and I didn't really like spinning with it. So I'm thinking maybe it's just the fiber that wasn't 100% my thing as well. But yeah, I'm quite happy with it. And I had it sitting on my bobbin for way too long because I just, like I said, I don't like, or I'm always too lazy to wind it up. But yeah, you can see what it looks like. And I'm quite happy with it. And then I started a new project and I'm just absolutely in love with it. And once again, the fiber is from Sarah's Texture Crafts. And the colorway is called Precious Rock and it's a Polworth braid. So um, this is what the fiber looks like. I just kind of split the braid lengthwise about six times, I think, and created these little fiber nests that I like to spin from. And I really, really like spinning with Polworth. It's this very squishy sort of fiber, very bouncy, and I think it just spins so nicely. So this is what I've done. I've 
almost finished my spin because I've just had so much fun. I only started this last night. But I'm spinning singles and I'm actually planning to keep this as a singles yarn. So I think the singles are about, should be around fingering weight. And you can see they're very bouncy. And after I finish spinning them, I will fold them, which means that you um, put them in hot water and then in ice cold water and water and then the hot water again. And that starts to felt the fibers, which then makes the yarn stronger and also more balanced because Usually when you spin yarn, you, you twist it in a certain way and then you ply it in the other way, so that makes it balanced again. But with singles, you don't ply it, so naturally single yarns are not balanced. So you fold them and that usually does the trick if you don't put enough uh, too much twist. So you have to spin these a lot less, with a lot less twist than you would if you were going to ply that. So I just love these colors so much. I love this fiber and... I think it has to be one of my favorite spins ever, like, I love Sarah's fiber, and just, um, the fiber prep is really well, this yarn is not felted at all, a lot of, I feel like a lot of fibers, hand dyed fibers, they come a little bit felted, and it really annoys me, and for me it takes the fun out of spinning, but this, I'm just spinning along, and I'm just having so much fun, and I really expected to spin on this for a long time, but it's just flying off my wheel, I suppose. So I'm really happy with this and I'm really enjoying it because like I mentioned before I think I'm going to my family's house for a few days so I can't I won't be able to spin there so I'm trying to get a little bit of spinning in now. So that's it for spinning and now I don't have any acquisitions this week which is good because I had a lot in these past few weeks and we're moving so there's no point in ordering anything. So I will move on straight into life in general, so if you're not interested in that, then thank you so much for watching. I hope you decide to come back and you liked it and you may want to subscribe or meet us in the Ravelry group. I always love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much and have a great week. And if you want to stick around, um, I'll just go a little bit into what happened this week. It's been another one of these absolutely crazy weeks. I'll try to not go into too much detail, but yeah, um, the really positive thing was that we had visitors from um, Australia, so I spent a, what was it, I think 10 months in Australia living with a host family and going to school when I was 15, so that was in 2008, 2009, and I came back a few times and I had a boyfriend over there and so I don't know, I have this sort of connection to Australia, I've worked there for a while as well, and yeah, so I am a big fan, and yeah. So anyways, my um, host parents, who I lived with back then, they are big travelers, so I've actually seen them a couple of times ever since, because they love to travel, and I love to travel, um, but this time they came to Germany, and they stayed in my city to hang out with me for four days, so they arrived on Tuesday, and... If you've been following the podcast, you know that my life is has been pretty crazy anyway, so I was really worried that it was, it, was, it was just going to be too much and too stressful, and I mean, when you have visitors, you want to be there for them and spend lots of time with them, and I was a little bit worried about that, but we just had the best time. Like, um, I hung out with them a lot, and, you know, we did some things around Würzburg, which was great because... It's also, you know, one of my last weeks in Würzburg, so for me it was another opportunity to do some, do some things and see some places, which I'm probably not going to see for a long, for a long time. And I feel like all we did was eat lots of good German food and had lots of drinks and ice cream and we spent a lot of time outside and yeah, it was just so nice to hang, hang out with them and talk and they met Kai, who was my boyfriend, and yeah. That's just been so nice and worked out really well, like, just because they've traveled a lot and, like, they were really sensible about, you know, they didn't want to take up too much of our time and, yeah, it was just really good and it was a lot of fun and last night when we said goodbye to them I was actually quite emotional because I know I'll see them again and, you know, they'll come back to Germany because they love it, but yeah, it was quite hard to say goodbye. Um, besides that, um... Last week I mentioned that we've been having some apartment drama and that basically continued. But what's happening is that we are actually moving in two weeks. So that is crazy. 
Like today in two weeks um, we'll have the company pick up all of our things and then drive them down to Munich, which is where we are moving to. So that's about two and a half hours, three hours from here. So it's a big move. Um, my boyfriend is picking up the um, keys for the new apartment next week. Um, and I mean, all is going well. I feel like we've sorted out a lot of things. For example, we seem to actually be getting internet connection down there as soon as we move down there. The moving dates are now set, which is all good. But of course, it's a little bit stre stressful because you have to do all these things. And I'm sure all of you guys have moved before and you know how stressful it can be. Um, so because we're moving, that's why I decided to record today, because next week I'm going to spend actually a good part of this week, I don't, know, I don't even know, in my hometown in Rothenburg. My boyfriend will be in England, in London. So we only really have one week after that in which we have time to organize everything and get packing and we'll both be working as well. So yeah, things are a little bit crazy and that's why I figured it, it makes sense to record today. And then I'll fit in a recording sometime next week on the weekend. And then the weekend after we'll be moving, so that'll be moved around a little bit as well. But I really would like to keep this podcast as much on a schedule as I possibly can. So that's the update on the move. And then the thing that happened this week, as I mentioned last week, I had um, my big meeting with my um, regarding my thesis. So for those of you who don't know, I'm writing my psychology master's thesis at the moment. And I've been working on it for two and a half months, or almost three months. And I had a big meeting with the supervisor as well as the professor, who has to be a secondary supervisor. Um, and I was quite anxious about that, and I was just really hoping that everything would go through, because I was ready to start my um, survey, and essentially I, was, I had been ready to do that for two weeks, but everything had been held up because of that meeting. So that meeting finally happened and I was quite nervous about it and it was a big disaster. Um, but just because of the organization that was behind that, so you know, when you have two supervisors, they're supposed to have the same sort of idea of what's going on and what should be going on and what they want. And um, the professor is actually, you know, the new boss of my supervisor and he only got here two weeks ago and all this stuff happened and in the end, it, is, um, it turned out that my thesis has completely shifted, which was the worst possible outcome. And so I think the changes that we are doing now are for the best, but I really felt like, you know, the last three months, my whole work, and I put a lot of work into all of that, has been for nothing, and I was very upset about that, obviously. But I realized that none of that was actually my fault. It was just a fault in the way that things were organized and I'm just the one who has to deal with it. So I'm actually just moving on and I did the hard part of deleting my entire proposal and starting to write a new proposal with a sort of shifted topic and different argumentation and different research and all of that. And I was just dreading, you know, starting again, but I've actually started again and I've worked quite a lot which I didn't think I would be able to, but I actually fit in quite a lot of work, even with our visitors and everything. So I'm back on track. This whole thing probably cost me, I don't know, one or two months for sure, which is why it did upset me. And together with the whole moving thing, that was just a lot to digest. But right now I feel like there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm just going to stay positive and work on it as much as I can and just try to move forward. And I do think that the changes that we did make and the shift of the focus will make it a lot easier for me in the long run. So that's that. So yeah, this week has been full of, you know, we sort of problems and there's also some possible health issues and all of this stuff is going on, but I'm just trying to stay positive and I've had some really good times this week as well and I'm enjoying my knitting and with the whole move I'm just looking forward to just when we finally have our things there. Like... I feel like just, you know, having everything done here and sitting in the car and we'll stay overnight at my parents' place and then driving down to the new apartment and then, you know, getting settled there. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to, you know, being in the place where I know that I'm going to be for a long time. Because right now, you know, we're still living here, but we don't want to, you know, do anything to make the apartment dirty. 
we haven't really cooked that much and it just doesn't really feel like that much of a home anymore just because we know we're moving so i'm looking forward to getting to the new place and settling in and i'll have a craft room so i'm looking forward to reorganizing all of my stash and yeah i'm looking forward to all of that um yeah so like i mentioned um tomorrow we actually have another visitor who is a friend of my boyfriend's from sweden coming which should be interesting and then interesting and then i'll spend a few days with my family because i'm just hoping that there i can get a lot of work done and the nice thing of living with your family is you know that they will cook and you don't really have to think about that many things and i actually haven't lived with my family or like been with my family for more than two days in years so i don't know how long i'm going to stay if i'm going to stay from monday until friday or maybe just a few days will be enough but yeah i'm looking forward to spending some time with them and also hopefully getting a crazy amount of work done because yeah i just really want to give it my 100 percent and then next week will be all or the week after we'll be all organizing and getting things done and hopefully moving so that's pretty exciting i would really like um, to publish my pattern next week as well so if i do i'm sure you'll find it because i'll post it all over instagram and probably put some sort of notice in Ravelry as well so if that happens you should probably find out and of course I'll be talking about it on the next podcast as well so um, I think that's it from me today so I'm looking forward to just hanging out today and putting some squares into my blanket doing some sock knitting and I'm kind of craving a new cast on I'm not sure if I'm going to allow myself to cast on something new but yeah, um, let's have a little knitcation and then have lots of power for next week. So thank you to everyone who's been watching. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's any ever anything you'd like to let me know or ask, and there's the Ask Away thread in the group, so you might want to use that, or you can always just get in touch with me through um, Ravelry, which is, uh, my, my Ravelry name is Wipfi, W-U-E-P-F-I. So yeah, um, thank you so much for watching again and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and a good week and I will talk to you soon. Bye!